Thanks once again for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Up first here, we've got a webcam shot of Nome and uh, picked up about uh, an inch of snow today. Uh, and you can see now they probably have about one to two inches on the ground. Uh, so everything white now. And then Norton Sound out there is still mostly sea ice free. And moving on to the next shot here, Kodiak Island, uh, rain ended and uh, winds swing around to the northwest. Of course, that's what shut the rain off. Gusted 40, 45 miles per hour today, diminishing at the state airport, which is uh, where this shot's from. And we're gusting as high as 46 miles an hour this afternoon at Akiak. And that uh, at least uh, tried to decrease the clouds here and uh, went VFR, the flying conditions. You can see kind of a wavy pattern to the clouds indicating probably a pretty bumpy ride in and around the island during the afternoon or probably for the entire day today. And moving on to the hazardous weather graphic, we've got a winter storm warning out for the central interior, which includes the greater Tanana area for three to six inches of snow tonight into tomorrow. Uh, and that's uh, out, I believe, into tomorrow evening before it's scheduled to end. And then out to the west here, winter weather advisory for the St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait Coast, uh, snow fell all day today. Savunga and Gamble temperatures now near or just below the freeze point there. And so precipitation all in the form of snow. And again, could pick up three to six inches. Also, the winds will be on the increase out of the north uh, later tonight and into tomorrow. We could see gusts 40, maybe 45 miles an hour. So with the snow, that'll be blowing and drifting around, reducing visibilities, possibly as low as half a mile at times. Satellite imagery showing the uh, clouds here associated with the snow, St. Lawrence Island, back up toward the Bering Strait coast. Snow today, uh, Shishmaref, Kotzebue had snow as well, and they picked up uh, about an inch or so of uh, snow at Kotzebue, and a little bit less there at Shishmaref, and uh, as much as two to four inches probably fell around the Tanana area there in the central interior due to this area of clouds here and a steady area of snow extending to the northeast there up toward Arctic Village and just flurries and fog but pretty breezy on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast with uh, winds gusting 25 to 35 miles per hour today up in that area. Otherwise uh, pretty light winds with the exception of Kodiak Island. A little breezy in the Alaska Peninsula but nothing uh, very noteworthy and also uh, actually windier conditions out over the central Aleutians today due to this system. Uh, moving on by Right through here, low center, very just tracking north of ADAC. They had wind gusts up to 56 miles per hour to the west associated with that. That's all diminishing now with the precipitation shifting in toward the eastern Aleutians and some rain this afternoon, northern edge there at St. Paul and St. George and uh, showers. Uh, really pretty, uh, well, none report at Chimia, but there are some showers around the area there. Snowfall level starting to drop. Meanwhile, along the southeast coast, we have the south to north flow. Uh, this portion in the south starting to push eastward, really cutting the moisture off. So rainfall amounts today weren't all that much. Uh, Latuya Bay picked up about 8 tenths of an inch, 12 hour period, any at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Otherwise, only about uh, 12 hundredths or so at Juneau. And even lighter amounts, more of a scattered shower condition on down to the south there. And some rain, roughly half an inch at Yakutat and some moisture right up into the uh, eastern Cop River Basin area there with uh, Paxson picking about a tenth of an inch of uh, liquid water equivalent precipitation there. And then uh, had some clearing occurring over northern Cook Inlet today. Otherwise, kind of a mostly cloudy day with some widely scattered rain or snow showers. Moisture shifting north where they brought freezing rain into Nanana today and a little bit into the Fairbanks area. That should be ending uh, at any time there with the chillier air, freezing levels should drop and air aloft cool enough to at least shut the freezing rain chances off uh, this evening, even all the way down into southern Alaska, but hanging on over the extreme southern areas until probably midnight tonight. 
Otherwise, uh, next system out here, upper level low up over the northwest Bering Sea, that's going to be tracking eastward. This system today over the southern Bering, that moving eastward, and that will continue east uh, to move to the east and then eventually a little bit to the southeast there. Now will allow the chillier air to finally start seeping south and southeastward into the area, but still tonight and this evening, chance of freezing rain up into the interior had that today. And I'll continue uh, at least into the evening possibly, but it'll be lighter than it has been. And some areas didn't see any at all. Otherwise, uh, clearing out, rain ended Kodiak Island, as I mentioned. Rain on the increase over the Alaska Peninsula, northward to the Fribloffs. Back down in, uh, with the frontal systems here, the warm front and then the cold front. Showers cut off uh, right behind the front there. And the wind's beginning to diminish. And uh, all that improving trend continues out toward the Aleutians there. Otherwise, we had the moderate snow here in the central interior, extending northeastward across the upper Yukon Valley to Arctic Village. And breezy conditions on the eastern Arctic coast. And some moderate amounts of rain, uh, barely making the moderate category. But again, about half an inch falling in 12 hours at Yakutat and uh, some rain over the northern panhandle areas with just scattered showers down to the south. For the forecast for tonight, we'll see that uh, front lines up right along the coastline and still some moderate rain will occur here on the northern portion of that front with uh, rain increasing on down toward Annette, Metlakatla, Ketchikan. We'll probably see a little more rain, maybe possibly a significant amount of rain uh, but nothing more than probably half an inch falling at the most down that way. Small craft advisories along the coast ahead of the front and some areas of the inside waters uh, this evening and overnight tonight will be diminishing as that front weakens and tries to push eastward. Showers extend back along the North Gulf Coast, so continuing a let up in the rainfall. Coming more showery as time goes on here for the Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula area. Still a narrow band of mixed precipitation going on across southern Alaska, mostly snow with the winter weather advisories and the winter storm warning out for the central interior. Especially back here, Seward Peninsula, you can see periods of light snow continuing across the whole area there, up into the uh, Chukchi Sea northwest coast areas. And places like Noatak could see another two inches of snow overnight tonight. And areas of light snow uh, could increase, could see maybe a couple inches falling there in the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. So it looks like those winds will begin to uh, let up up in that area with the gradient kind of shifting up to the north as that trough swings northward. Low pressure in the Bering Sea moves to Bristol Bay tonight, tracks east or east southeastward a little bit there, actually coming up. So a little to the northeast following the Alaska Peninsula and it'll take a turn to the east. So uh, the rain changes to mixed rain and snow as the colder air flows in on increasing northwest winds across the Fox Islands into the Alaska Peninsula tonight. And it looks like some uh, Snow showers poised to swing into the Fribilof Islands here on the colder air coming down out of the north with a uh, little center holding there just uh, south-southwest of Nome. In better conditions out here to the west. Looks like it'll be shower-free with just clouds over the western central Aleutians. Those showers at least initially staying off to the north. And uh, looks like that'll continue into tomorrow with a high pressure building out over the western Bering Sea into the central Aleutians. Look for a partly sunny afternoon for ADAC and mostly cloudy for Atka, maybe even some clearing out towards Chimia, but increasing mid and high level clouds due to a storm that's off the chart there late in the day. Snow and blowing snow, St. Lawrence Island, the winter weather advisory back to the Bering Strait coast. Snow showers up here over the northwest, some areas of light snow, and uh, snow beginning to become a little more showery here in the central interior, but holding on through the day and into tomorrow night will continue to add to the accumulations you pick up there over the next 24 hours and into the uh, low pressure lifting northward here. Brings a chance of some snow into the Northway Toke area and uh, showers Copper River Basin. Another trough keeps it wet from the uh, Cordova area in toward about Yakutat and the northern Panel. Still scattered showers to the north, this low tracking just south of Kodiak. And on Wednesday, that continues to go southeastward. Chillier air comes in, cooler in temperatures, freezing levels down to sea level now, except for right along the coastline. Rain and snow showers. I'll probably, whatever falls, uh, if there's any moisture left there for Kodiak, will be in the form of snow by Wednesday afternoon or midday Wednesday. It's colder air definitely coming in from the northwest there. And that's uh, noted by the snow showers now in the Bristol Bay area. Mixture for the Alaska Peninsula. And areas of snow continue, but winds diminishing now for the St. Lawrence Island area up into the Bering Strait. And areas of snow across the northern interior right out to the Arctic coast. And then back to the west, you can see the next storm 
pulling in to the far western Aleutian, southwest Bering Sea, increasing the winds there with rain back into those areas, ridging high pressure, improves conditions, still a risk of some snow showers with the Pribilofs, diminishing winds. Looks like a pretty fair day for Adak and Atka. That's shifting into the Fox Islands as well. Could see a few breaks or sun breaks there. Wednesday afternoon from Alaska, Dutch Harbor, and even Nikolsky. And as I mentioned, more rain with another front here off the panhandle, off the southeast coast. But again, down south, light amounts, just some scattered showers with periods of light rain on up to the north. Looking at low temperatures for tonight, pretty mild, mid-40s over the southeast coast. Still above freezing here, south central Alaska tonight to upper 30s in Prince William Sound. Mid-teens, Tanana Valley right up to the Brooks Range. Single numbers on the plus side of zero for the Arctic coast. Out to the west, upper 30s, St. Lawrence Island. Uh, I don't think that's probably correct. Probably more in the upper 20s would be more uh, likely. Lower 30s for the Pribilofs, mid to upper 30s here for the Aleutians. And then your highs for tomorrow, single numbers to lower teens for the Arctic coast. Lower 20s into the Brooks Range there, mid 20s, Tanaha Valley. Lower to mid 30s now for South Central Alaska and 40s for the Panhandle Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. And then lows following morning, down into the 20s now finally, maybe even upper teens, some areas of South Central Alaska. Single numbers, Copper River Basin. Single numbers and teens, Tanaha Valley, Northeast Interior. Dropping down to near or a little below zero for the Arctic coast. Below free, or near freezing, all the way out to the Southwest coast, Pribilofs and upper 30s there for the Aleutians and lower 30s for the Prince William Sound area. Highs for Wednesday afternoon, a little above zero on the Arctic coast to mid 30s over the southern part of Alaska except for Kodiak. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, first graphic here showing a lot of widespread IFR here from the southwest coast, Seward Peninsula into the mid Tanana Valley, northward there all the way to the uh, central eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and then some spotty areas of IFR here down over the uh, Aleutian Range, Alaska Peninsula, and marginal out to the west, gradually improving farther to the west, and the North Gulf Coast, Coast Range, Kenai Peninsula, some IFR to start the day with, eastward, and across areas of Panhandle. Afternoon, that area retreats back along the border, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay holds across Yakutat and the Coast Range here. Widespread IFR continues with snow, and there is a fog here through the central interior all the way up to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Back into uh, central Seward Peninsula, Yukon, and Cuscombe Delta, north side of the Cuscombe River here. Marginal VFR down across Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island. Looks like VFR breaking out south of the Kenai Peninsula, Kamishak Bay, southern Cook Inlet. Marginal VFR, northern and eastern Bering Sea becoming VFR out here to the west and part of the Aleutians. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then for Wednesday morning, IFR holds here over the interior. Uh, a little bit better, but still some IFR on the far eastern Arctic coast through here, and some appears now on the west side, uh, possibly grazing the Wainwright Point Lay area. Otherwise, marginal VFR, Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, right on down into Bristol Bay, some VFR up here to the north, maybe Togiak Dillingham breaking out to uh, VFR in the morning, marginal south central Alaska, still some IFR in the North Gulf Coast areas, but less now in the coast range, holding strong though, or holding here over the northern panhandle and over toward the border. Afternoon at uh, just marginal VFR, possible VFR here down toward the southern coast of, uh, or the southern part of Prince of Wales Island, IFR up in the north. Marginal VFR now for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Copper River Basin, some IFR here along and north of the Alaska Range. Another batch up there from the White Mountains, say, into the southern upper Yukon Valley, eastern Brooks Range IFR. Marginal VFR with just some mostly miss areas of IFR here in the west. And Bering Sea, marginal VFR. Maybe some VFR there around Nikolsky, but generally looking at marginal VFR conditions right on up along the Alaska Peninsula. A little bit of improvement there for Kodiak Island and Bristol Bay. Passes, Anatovic, IFR, same forecast for Adigan. Pretty IFR, uh, looks IFR through tomorrow. And uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR gradually improving to VFR in the afternoon. And rainy, IFR improving to marginal. A little slower there, windy, occasionally marginal, with gradual improvement in the afternoon. Isabel, IFR, 
becoming marginal, but it looks like Mentasta, though, you'll stay IFR the entire day. Tanita, marginal VFR at times. And Portage, optimistically, I'll say improving to VFR late in the afternoon. Definitely will be an improving trend throughout the day. And for Chilkoot and White, holding it IFR. Freezing levels, again, cooler air coming in. And uh, now we've got 2,000 feet down Kenai Peninsula, the North Gulf Coast, and a little bit lower even over the Panhandle there, 4 to 6,000 feet tomorrow morning. And that'll continue to uh, drop off into the afternoon. 2,000 feet still nudged north side of the Alaska Peninsula, but out here to the west, just south of the Aleutians. And icing, a swath of light to very isolated moderate rime icing here from the northwest coast through the Bering Strait down across Nunavak Island. Below about 5,000 feet, another batch there, uh, Koyukuk Valley, Central Eastern Brooks Range on out to the coast. Otherwise, uh, pretty much icing free here over much of the interior and some icing here over Bristol Bay to southwest Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula. Another batch here, could be some considerable moderate there on the eastern North Gulf Coast. And looking at the jet stream, south to north flow here, this southerly flow now, as you can see, pushing eastward, still catching a uh, portion of the southern panhandle, but uh, cooler upper level lows back to the west and northwest here. This one actually slides southeastward, so that'll allow the cooling trend to continue over the interior. And at 9,000 feet, light winds over the interior south, it's 5 to 15, 25 knots with this low in the Gulf, mainly over the northern panhandle, eastern north Gulf coast. Northwesterlies, 25 to 35, comes sweeping on down across the Alaska Peninsula and central Aleutians. And then at uh, 3,000 feet, uh, pretty light winds with that ridge out toward the west. Northerly 25, turn northwest 25 to 30 across the peninsula. Light variable winds over the interior. And taking a look at turbulence, occasional light to isolated moderate chop for small aircraft over the pan, and occasional moderate for the Alaska Peninsula. Winter Lake Lodge is on Finger Lake, northwest of Anchorage, about 50 minutes by uh, Bush Plain. Everything at the lodge that you see has been flown in by airplane and ordering produce and getting produce out in 20 below conditions from a 50 minute flight onto a, an ice covered lake has its challenges. And uh, we're also a checkpoint for the Iditarod dog sled race in the winter time. In the winter it's a lot of preparation, especially for the Iditarod. Uh, we love the Iditarod because it's sort of a cross-state community event. Uh, at our location, it begins when the Iditarod Air Force pilots start dropping off supplies. We uh, first receive straw, bales of straw, which we then move from our airstrip over to the checkpoint area by snow machine. Uh, after that, we sort of make a great big doggy parking lot out here. And we do that with the groomers go along the Iditarod Trail and see if there's you know, trees that have fallen down, any uh, bridges that need to be made over washouts or make sure creek ice is safe. We drill holes into the ice uh, so that there's water for the mushers to uh, add to the dog food when the, when the dogs check in. Most of them spend the night here or certainly rest here and they'll feed their dogs. Over the Iditarod, um, the lodge is packed. It's full um, of our full service guests. And um, at the same time, we also feed the 70 mushers and 10 to 15 uh, checkers and, and vets and um, lots of people that just come in off of the trail. I think even from the fine dining meals that we feed our guests to the food that we feed the mushers, um, I think everybody's kind of surprised at what they what they get. Mandy will kind of spearhead that and help you guys out. She tries to have everything prepped. I think our guests notice that uh, we are a pretty close family. I think they envy that in some ways. You know, some people say, oh, that's, that's pretty cool having your kids uh, working with you in the business. I, lots of people do that, of course, come up in the business. And, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, everybody that works here uh, really has to have uh, responsibility for a lot of things. We, we have no prima donna chefs, no prima donna guides, no prima donna owners. So if the dog lot needs to be cleaned up, we do it. Somebody needs to meet the airplane, we do it. We unload it. We haul the recyclables, the garbage, get it out, greet the guests, haul bags, pump fuel, uh, whatever needs to be done. 
I think, you know, people really get to see my family for who we are, you know, we don't act differently or, or anything. Our family um, really work well together to bring an incredible experience to anybody staying here at the Lodge. Um, but we also all bring something different to the table. Um, you know, my sister with her wellness and, and yoga and, and massage and, and me with baking and pastry and, and kind of pushing the limits to what we can do. Um, you know, my dad is just still a kid and incredibly excited to go out and, and go to mountaintops every day. And my mom has had the um, incredible culinary career of working with some of the best chefs in the world and has had the opportunity to befriend Julia Child and uh, work with Jack Papan. It's a difficult business and it does take commitment and you really have to be passionate about being out of town and, and the hardships that happen once in a while. But the rewards are great and uh, people are more and more seeking out a more personal interaction with their activities, their vacations, their adventures. We hope our visitors leave Winter Lake with uh, either continued or new appreciation for Alaska. We get people who have saved their pennies for their whole lives to come experience Alaska and they're just in awe of the lifestyle and so we really we really like that. I think just because my family's been doing this business for so long it really doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like we're serving others. It, it feels just like a day-to-day -day living. We're pretty simple people and um, we don't have extravagant things so I think when when we want to treat ourselves or, or relax, we kind of just um, sit back and enjoy the view. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to uh, today's sea ice analysis. Um, slow growth still continuing here along this portion of the uh, ice edge, slowly coming southward. And uh, ice along the west coast here should begin to increase and expand out away from the coast over the next uh, five days with the uh, best chance of that occurring after, in the three to six day period coming up with colder temperatures, a little more north-northeast winds. And for the coastal water forecast here, southern southeast coast, west to southwest, 15 knots, southerly 20 knots, increased to 25 knots, small craft advisories with 11 foot seas on the north coast. Inside water is not too bad, southeast 15 knots, central and southern areas, Lynn Canal, south 20 with 4 foot seas. And the outlook for Wednesday, swing those around to the north at 15, easterly 15 for Stevens Passage, southeast for Clarence Strait, southeast 20. All along the outer coastline, seas running 8 to 10 feet. <clears throat> and for Cook Inlet, northwest 10 tomorrow, seas 1 to 2 feet. Northwest 30, uh, definitely stronger here, coming out of southern Cook Inlet into Kamishak Bay. Small craft advisories into the Barren Islands as well, with seas running 8 feet. Northwest 20 knots, western North Gulf Coast, northeast to 20 on the east side. And Prince William Sound, northeast 20 knots, but seas only up to 2 feet. And for Wednesday, northeast 15 there for the sound, no change in the sea height, staying pretty low, slight, seas to two feet. And southeast 15 for the eastern north Gulf Coast, light easterlies for the western areas there with seas of four feet. And Kodiak, or um, at the Barren Islands, northwest at 20, right on up into Kamishak Bay, Cook Inlet, north to northeast 15 knots with four, three to four foot seas. Prince William's uh, <laughs> Bristol Bay, northwest, 25 knots, turn westerly here from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait, west, 20 knots, 4 to 8 foot seas, and west northwesterlies across the Alaska Peninsula at 30 knots. Then for Wednesday in Bristol Bay, north winds 25 knots, turn northwest here, Sitkanak to Castle Cape at 25, 10 foot seas. Stronger winds coming into the Alaska Peninsula northwest at 30 with 10 to 13 foot seas. Small craft advisories here up the east side of Kodiak Island. Northwest winds there, 25 with 8 foot seas. Definitely colder temperatures will be riding in on those northwest winds across all areas. And for the eastern Aleutians, northwest 20 to 30 knots, seas 10 to 13 feet. And the central Aleutians, northwest 20, pretty light and variable winds west of Adak at 15 knots with 7 to 8 foot seas. 
and that changes. That's kind of the calm before the storm. 45 knot east southeasterlies come in from about Kiska Island on out to Shimi and Attu in the afternoon with gales almost to ADAC. Otherwise, central Aleutians east 30 knots, 9 to 12 foot seas. And small craft advisories for 25 knot winds here for the Fox Islands with seas running 7 to as high as 12 feet there north of Unalaska Island. Southwest coast, west winds 30 knots tomorrow, north 30 for St. Lawrence Island. And the Pribilofs, northwest 30, same forecast for St. Matthew Island. No seas at about 11 to 12 feet. And small craft advisories continue into Wednesday, but lighter, north 25 here for St. Lawrence Island. North to northwest, 25 along the southwest coast, seas uh, 8 to 9 feet, and north 25 for St. Matthew Island, turn northwest to 25 with 10-foot seas there for the Permaloff Islands. And uh, for tomorrow, I've got uh, easterly gales out for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, up to 35 knots, slowly diminishing to small craft advisories on the central coast, west side, east 20, northeast 20, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Wales, north 25, seas at 8 feet. And then for Wednesday, northwest, 25 for the Chukchi Sea, a 10-foot seas. And from Cape Thompson up the west side, east to 20 knots, 7 to 5-foot seas. And brisk wind advisory, central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast, really uniform in the winds now, all out of the east, all at 25 knots sustained. And for tonight, rain, possibly moderate here, northern Panhandle, mostly Elfin Cove, uh, back toward Yakutat, and then becoming more showery here into Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula. And uh, mixed precipitation pattern on its way out now. Colder air will start seeping in from the northwest as this low tracks off to the southeast as just cuts across south of Kodiak Island tomorrow. And still maybe some rain and snow showers along the coastline here and then back down along the Alaska Peninsula. But snowfall levels are coming down. Snow with this system over the southwest interior. Winter weather advisories for the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island. Gusty north winds maybe to 40, 45. Rain continues northeast Gulf Coast. And on Wednesday, uh, stays wet for the Panhandle, especially in the north. Cooler with snow showers, southern Alaska, chance of snow in the west. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.